What up, Long Beach? Welcome back to your home for everything local sports. It's JJ. And Mike, this high school football playoff video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company. And all of our coverage of Lakewood this year is sponsored by J.P. Crawford. Big ups to all you Lancers. Lakewood is hosting the CIF football playoffs again on Friday. And something wicked this way comes. It's a fired up Lakewood team that's won four of its last five games. Outscored its last two opponents 91 to 20. And is hosting Hemet in its first round of the CIF Southern Section Division 8 playoffs. Basically their third straight playoff game, JJ. Last time Lakewood won a playoff game at home was 2010, a year after Justin Utupo graduated. That's how long it's been. The Bulldogs ready to come in and pound the rock, but Lakewood's defense also ready. Hemet trying to swing past Anthony Winston Jr. blows it up and Javi on the spot. It's Javier Aguilar with the scoop and score from about 50 yards out. Lakewood sideline just absolute bedlam. Lakewood defense giving a home team an early lead. Back in this Lakewood defense, it was phenomenal tonight. Never gave Hemet an inch to breathe, JJ. This Red Swarm attack in full tilt boogie right now. For the Lakewood offense, it was slow going in the first half, trying to get Caleb Foster the ball. Anything positive was canceled out by negatives, like a bevy of penalty flags on the Lancers. More of that to come. Hemet with their own featured running back, and Daniel Mendoza breaks loose for an eight-yard gain that sets up third and short. Quarterback Draven Lopez is going to try to sneak it, but Lakewood's defense says the nano. The physicality just dominant tonight. Quote the Draven, nevermore a first down, JJ. The Lancers trying desperately to get the playmakers the ball in space, but it just was not happening. In this disconnected first half, Hemet trying to do the same thing over that strong front seven, and that wasn't happening. Montreal Mingo with the pass breakup right there. Hemet forced a punt, but it's a bit of trickeration from the visitors. They throw for a first down, but it's incomplete. But the penalty flag for pass interference, that's definitely good enough for the first down. That puts the Bulldogs in field goal position, and the punter who created it is also the kicker. Moises Samquita, plenty of leg on that 39-yard field, field goal, and it cuts the Lakewood lead to 7-3 early in the second. Lakewood quarterback Braden down and trying to answer the score, but not that way. Going the wrong way. Chris Washington knows the rule about sixing after picking. Mr. Smith goes to pay dirt, and all of a sudden, Hemet leads 10-7. Ball just getting away from down in a little bit there, and Washington capitalizes. Lakewood wants to go bananas Foster on its ensuing drive, and 22 is loose. But if you've seen our videos before, you know it's never a good sign when I fast forward if your team has the ball because you want that to be a touchdown. Instead, it's a holding flag. 10 penalties for 87 yards on Lakewood in the first half. Downing's gonna need a big play here on fourth down and short to keep the drive alive. He hits to Kim Ray Brown, who stayed alive on his route during the scramble, and he gets the first down. However, after a sack forces third and long, Downing trying to buy time looking for the end zone, instead finds a Hemet defender with the interception to keep Hemet ahead. 10-7 at half, and I gotta be honest with you, this had all the makings of an upset for the visiting Bulldogs if Lakewood couldn't get their offense going. But, JJ, I've got good news for you. First play of the second half, anything you can pick, I can pick better. It's the freshman, Ayeven Alpiu, goes up to high point that ball and comes down with an interception that really shifted the momentum in this game because when Lakewood gets the ball back, that rushing attack is finally taking advantage of its speed, going to the wide side of the field and making plays. Ellis Gibson with the first down. Two plays later, it's Zion Smith turning on the burners to get into the open field and find Pater. Three runs to start the third quarter, seven points for Lakewood. Lancers retake the lead 14-10, and good news, they would not relinquish it. Up to this point was the biggest gain for Hemet, JJ, that's it right here. The biggest gain of the night for the Hemet offense. Woof. The Bulldogs getting desperate now and they start to make mistakes. This is an ill-advised throw. That a Zion Smith interception. There's a flag on the play. So, like, even if he did six it after he picked it, it wouldn't have counted. You I know, would have appreciated you know I mean? it still if, he, if he'd sixed it. You know, early fourth quarter, more self-inflicted wounds, though, for Lakewood. Penalties are going to force them to punt. But the Lancers have other ideas. Any punt you can fake, we can fake better. The freshman, Caleb Tafua, is going to pick up the first down. That freshman class looking great. A few plays later, we've seen Niner get loose a few times this year, and Downin is on at it again as he pulls it down in and takes it to the tilt for the house call. It is now 21-10. Lakewood Lancers starting to feel a little bit more comfortable in this postseason. They need a drive to put this game away. You've got to foster the people. Caleb Foster, 17 carries tonight and 106 yards for Deuce Deuce. Foster, not the only Lakewood running back chewing up yards late as Caden Clark goes around the outside to get a huge first down. That Lakewood rushing attack built for the playoffs, JJ. Then for the second time tonight, pulling it down and again, takes it in himself. 
It's the QB for the TD, and that's going to cap an incredible second half for this Lakewood team. Maybe their best second half of the season, considering what happened on both sides of the ball. Because one more big shout-out to the Red Swarm as IOPU pulls down his second interception of the game. Three interceptions, one fumble, a touchdown, 26 total yards allowed by this defense. That's only six passing yards and 20 rushing yards. And oh yeah, they only gave up two first downs in this game, a 28-10 win for the Lakewood Lancers. Able to hold it down while the offense sort of got itself together and got that run game going in the second half. A huge win, Lakewood's first home playoff win since 2010 when Thad McNeil was a head coach. That feels like it was a couple years ago, Jage. Wow. We were there for that one. You know we were here for this one. We will be there all the way for these Long Beach football teams as they motored through the playoffs. Lakewood visiting Redondo Union next week. Thanks as always to all of our sponsors, including Ocean Law Center, and makes you stick with 562.org for all of your local sports coverage.